We want community. We want to be loved. We want to be cared for. We want friends. We want support. And I think that's what you find on Hilton Head. I am so delighted we are with Mira Scott and we are in her beautiful art studio and I tell you this is like one of the happiest places on Hilton Head Island because it's so cheerful and colorful. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. What an honor. Well, thank and it's so nice to see you again, a fellow Montrealer. That's right. Yes. That's, we've had the conversation <laughs> and we're going to get a little bit further into that but you know one thing about Mira I, I love her artwork. You see it around town because it's part of a lot of the events that we have here. Mm -hmm. That's true. I, I think that um, because I do have a little bit of a unique style, I'm self-taught, mm -hmm. and people identify with the color, it makes them happy, and you know, when they're thinking about how to best present their events, they think pop, color, excitement, and I think that's well, one of the reasons that... Well, this I'd like to point out here, this is for a TEDx talk. That's right, yes. You know, and I, I did a TEDx, but this is, um, this is what brought me to you mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago when I saw this. And that so was so much fun. It is fun, but your artwork brings inspiration to us. So, let's step back, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit, okay, Montreal, Yeah. how do we find Hilton Head Island? What's the coastal to you? What is coastal to me? Mm. Interesting backstory to that is that I was actually born on an island called Calumet Island in northern Quebec, 60 miles northwest of Ottawa. I was raised and educated on Montreal mm -hmm. Island, That's an island too, another Montreal. island, I and I end up on a third island, <laughs> and I actually own two islands. <laughs> Are you like the ultimate island girl? You know, there's there's <laughs> something really weird about how that all happened, but I think the connection to water has always been really strong, uh, particularly fresh water. I love yeah. the Ottawa River. Yeah. I really love the Ottawa River. And, you know, growing up in Montreal and being educated there, I love Montreal, but it was too big. It was too much. Okay. And the nature and the beauty of this area, you know, when I came here, there were only 6,000 people here. So it was very wild, very much like Calumet Island, where I originally came from. I mean, from. wild in flora and, and vegetation. Yes, okay. yes, beautiful, beautiful animals, flora. Um, we are considered semi-tropical, so it's a little bit different than what you find on the mainland. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit warmer and um, it's lush, it's beautiful. So you came down to, uh, to the island for uh, love and for potential business, mm -hmm. right? And correct. So from there, then you started to work with your artwork, correct? Mm -hmm. And in front of me is a beautiful story. And behind me, you can see the beautiful colors and storyboards that she talks about. So I want to talk a little bit about what um, Mira... I've been drawn to your turtle designs. Right. This piece here in particular... Uh -huh. You know, it's such a beautiful piece. And this is painted with acrylics? It's acrylic. Uh, there is some mixed media that I add in on the original, which is like 20 by 32. Um, you see pieces of glass uh, sort of embedded into the scenery here. Oh, interesting. And some iridescence. Interesting. What, what's big about Hilton Head Island that many people don't know is that turtles are a very big um, part of our community. We mm -hmm. we definitely want to make sure they have a happy stead here, living here. And we this is a piece where you have the mommy coming out, out of the ocean and then also the babies are going back in. And it, before we were talking about the stars and they also mean something in this picture. They there's, a do. Lot, there's a lot of storyboard yeah. that's going mm -hmm. on here. You've got the Big Dipper in this one, which is the name of this particular piece, and then the Little Dipper in this one. And the backstory is, I always have little stories that are somehow embedded into the, the backdrop of these. And my dad would hunt, and that was the meat that we ate when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. So his philosophy was one bullet, one deer. It was not for sport, it was for food. So we would go out in the fields and, you know, really mostly go for a nice big walk and lie down in the fields and he could recite the names of the stars and the constellations in English, French, and Latin. Okay. So the game was that I had to figure out where the Big Dipper was, which is pretty easy for a kid. <laughs> and, um, and he would say to me, I'm the Big Dipper mm -hmm. and you're the Little Dipper. Oh, so it was a little, you know. Very sweet. Yeah. 
So how many years have you been an artist? I have been an artist my entire life. I grew up um, being told I was an artist mm -hmm. all along. Um, my mom would say that to me. My dad would say it to me. My aunt, if she babysat me, would give me paper and pencil and say, draw something. And it was a little intimidating because I didn't really understand why they kept saying that to me. But they kept saying, well, you're very sensitive. You're an artist. You're different. <laughs> like, OK. But you know, as time went on, I did, I did get into painting and it was a place for me, it was a safe place. Yeah. You know, it was quiet time, it was a time to be creative and literally go down rabbit holes. Yeah. You know, I love Alice in Wonderland, so this is just another way of me well, well, living a, my own Alice in Wonderland. It's a beautiful way to get lost. It is, and it is. And it's a journey. I mean, I'm, I wish I was a painter, but in yeah. any arts, you know, music, creating music, mm -hmm. art, however, you, you have to stay there to create the journey. Right, right. So this is interesting. I pulled these off the rack, and you're sharing with me. You know, one thing I like about Mira, with, with, with her artwork, she also brings in the community and other talented artisans, such as this gal here. Yes, Elizabeth Robin is a, a good friend of mine. I joke about how she is the poet laureate of Hilton Head. Okay. She's got two published books, and she asked me if it was all right to use my paintings as inspirations for poems. And I said, absolutely. And I think she's probably done a, maybe a dozen by now. Two of them have been published. And we love these little collaborations. So we've done these little postcards where you've got the artwork on one side, and then you have her poem on the back. Tell me about this one, because there's a large one right here. I can see right. in my view. Tell me what's the, what's the, the story. Now, this is an interesting little story. This, um, this one is called Rice Fields by Moonlight. OK. And I was asked to do a painting of rice. And if you look at rice, <laughs> it's kind of boring. It's stagnant and, you know, it's like wheat. It's either like this or like that or like that. And there really isn't a whole lot of movement. And it's very, I found it very difficult to figure out how to wrap my head around, geez, how am I going to make this fun? Yeah. So I started working with my own style and doing the water because I've gone to rice fields. And when you're watching them, at different times of the year, the water, the water is either going in or it's coming out. So you can't really tell if it's going in or coming out. And then I wanted the ethereal moon. And this is really a story about the Carolina gold rice that was originally cultivated here. Really? Mm -hmm. 1685, um, there was a ship captain who apparently came into Charleston Harbor. He couldn't pay for the repairs of his boat, so he paid with rice from Madagascar. And that's how we ended up having rice cultivated here. And it's, um, it's considered one of the best rice um, in the world. It's an aromatic, um, and you know, it's just a fun story. And I, I kind of got into the whole inspiration of it, went and visited a fellow who has this incredible rice field up in the upstate, mm -hmm. Campbell Cox. And yeah. he's brought it back. Isn't that? I didn't know that we had rice patties here, rice fields. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go to Savannah, right before the bridge, if you look on the sides, you will see the original rice fields. Or if you're flying into Savannah when they loop around, you look down and you can actually still see some of the, um, some of the places where they had the, the levees that would let the water in and out. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was prolific here. Well, this is... I love that story. So that's the interesting thing about the coastal communities. There's mm -hmm. so much involved here, and that's what we're going to talk about on the show. We're going to discover right. lots of things that the coastal communities have, to, have brought to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's an interesting piece here. You have a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> yes, this is a funny one. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of my paintings have the moon in them, and mm -hmm. it's because when my, my daughter's 21 now, but when she was little and I would be painting at home at night, I would often just walk outside to see what the moon was doing, and that moon would end up in the painting oftentimes. So mm -hmm. this was a harvest moon, but there was some, um, you know, she would be watching Alice in Wonderland, and I love Alice in Wonderland. So I'd be watching the movie with her, and all of a sudden there was this 30 second snippet, and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, it's this glade, and you want to <laughs> follow the light and go to the field and go see what's down there. And then it would be gone, and I kept thinking, I kept rerunning it over and over again, and I thought, I'm going to do that in a painting. I'm going to try and create that. So this is the, f the glade that you want to go visit. And then for the grass area, I did a three-man chess set. 
and the trees are actually the, the pawns on a chess set. And the butterfly, you know, just typical of Alice in Wonderland, it's really a butterfly in a butterfly in another butterfly. This is true. We need to get a strip, but this actually, it's, a, it's like a mosaic. Mm -hmm. It is a mosaic. Yeah. I didn't even catch on to it either until you sent yeah. that all that beautiful pieces. You never know where they're going to go. I mean, this particular piece was done, it was inspired by a girlfriend of mine who passed away. And um, she was of Scottish background and a formidable woman. Well, at one point in time, I had a bird rehab uh, hospital on Hilton Head for shorebirds. And I needed volunteers. So I said, well, Kathy, do you think you, do you, think you would be able to help out? And she said, sure. So she jumped in and well, a lot of the times we would get mockingbirds, which was not a shorebird, but people thought, oh my gosh, you know, it's a bird hospital. You take all birds, tropical, pet birds, wild birds, whatever. So this is a, a kind of a memorial piece to her. This, this is the mockingbird, and these are different little representations of her life. The birds at the top are leaving, and those are, those are the spirits leaving her. You know, she's leaving with the spirits. Um, the sunflowers, uh, the last time I saw her, I was in her, in her bedroom. She died at home. But um, a f another girlfriend had brought over this beautiful bouquet of sunflowers. And because it was uh, fall lighting, as the light was changing, all of a sudden it was almost as though the light exploded into the sunflowers. And we we're both admiring them. And she said, oh my gosh, you should take a picture of that. So I took out my phone, took a picture of it, and after she passed away, I decided that I was going to do a painting with the sunflowers that were her sunflowers. The strange twist to the story was that a lot of uh, her friends, my friends, our mutual friends, we all talked about the sunflowers, and she had said to another girlfriend that she would come back as a sunflower for us. <laughs> so. Consequently, we would be in different random places all over Beaufort County on Hilton Head, and we'd be going down the road, and all of a sudden you would see a random sunflower. And all of us started saying the same thing, and I thought, oh my gosh, she's come back. <laughs> so it was just a real, you know, it was a, it's a tribute painting for her, basically. Why do I like living on Hilton Head Island? And by the coast. And by the coast um, is probably because it's community. That's really what I think is the, the biggest draw for me. I've lived here for a long time, granted, but I always joke about everything is two degrees of separation here. I meet one person, I, I can guarantee you, if I talk to them for 15 minutes, we will figure out some other way that we are connected. And I think with the way the world is so big and people sometimes feel so disconnected, we really are all really very closely connected and I think the more that you see that and the more that you can encourage that and promote it in a community the more you have a cohesiveness this is a very unique community and I can walk out the door and if I have anything I need I can find somebody that will help me well I have to thank Mira so much for joining me I love you I think you're so talented oh, I love the stories you. about what you're sharing with us and continued success. Thank you so much. I look forward to our next conversation. I know we're gonna have a lot of fun together. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>